Hey everyone, it's George Crows with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. It's actually 5 p.m. on a Saturday evening and I just wanted to do some writing and put something together uh, to share with you all today. And I'll tell you, uh, it is 5 p.m. and I actually don't think I've done much today. Uh, busy week, crazy time, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm feeling a little anxiety today, uh, a little stressed out, and I actually um, shared this on my Instagram I saw this and somebody wrote, do you ever have a plan for the day and suddenly it's 4 p.m. and you've achieved literally nothing? And I actually shared that and I wrote, haha, joke is on you because it's only 3.47 p.m. and a lot can get done in 13 minutes. So this is my attempt uh, to do something. I did have some nice relaxing time uh, watching movies, just chilling out. And uh, I just been thinking a lot about kind of what's happening when we go back. And I think part of it for me, I've been really thoughtful of what I consume uh, online, on TV, because there's a lot of, you know, uh, anxiety about, you know, what's going to happen when we come back. And I've, you know, I, I kind of tend to watch a, a few shows just to keep up to date, but I know it can be overwhelming. And kind of talking about that today. What, what, like, I think one of the things that I'm struggling with, and I think a lot of people are struggling with, is like, what are we going back to? You know, what, what is our world going back to? And, um, and specifically because of the work that I do, and probably because of the work that people are listening to, uh, what about schools? And I actually just read this article about 10 minutes before I started this um, from NPR. And it shared about nine ways schools will look different when, and I hate this part of the title, and if they reopen. I'm sure they're going to reopen. Uh, I, I know that this is being recorded, but it really, the article talks a lot about things about, you know, safety measures and, you know, health and hygiene. One of the things that I read in the article that really kind of stuck with me and I was honestly kind of bothered by it was the idea that schools would return without sports, uh, you know, sporting events, assemblies. And I totally understand um, the health concerns, you know, in a coronavirus world. But I also think about like, that was the reason I went to school as a kid was to play sports was to do uh, drama, uh, to be in plays, things like that. Yeah, I, I really uh, enjoyed some of my classes. I wouldn't I'm not gonna lie and say I love going to school every day, because that would be lying. And I think a lot of people are in the same situation uh, as I was as a kid. And those extracurricular activities really for me they are what makes school it's not just about the academics it's the connections you know with your friends the opportunities that we have to really explore different opportunities and so I've been thinking uh, you know in that article that's really not my realm I'm not here to talk about safe and healthy or safe and safety and health uh, concerns uh, of what we're going to do when we come back, because that's obviously left better to people that uh, do that work, you know, for a living. But really, I've really been thinking about <laughs> what can I do? And what have I learned through this process that really will help me kind of grow through this process and get better. And I, I keep talking about this idea of a new and better normal. And, you know, not just uh, what education could look like, but you know how we have a different appreciation for one another. And so I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to share five things that I hope you know, kind of what I've been seeing as, to be honest, you really positive things that I hope we can take back to school. And these are things that I've been not just seeing from educators around the world, but um, but I've really been focusing on myself. I'm connecting. So I'm going to talk about these five things, but uh, Deidre Raymer, and I've mentioned Deidre several times. I've had her on the podcast before. Uh, she's in West Allis, Milwaukee. Incredible leadership team. She's an incredible leader. And her, she had a recent blog post and she shared this quote, instead of being critical of myself or why I wasn't doing more of this before, I'm setting expectations for myself and scheduling how and when I will continue my new and, re and reconnections at the same level when we're all face to face again. It makes me hopeful that my new normal may be a better one. And that's kind of what I'm focusing on today. So I'm gonna talk about these five things that I've been seeing and I've been focusing on and kind of what I hope when we go back to school, what this looks like. And so the first one is that people are and feel valued and realizing that both are very necessary. Now, I 
don't believe and any of these lists, by the way, that I'm sharing today, I, I don't believe that, you know, schools are not doing this at all. And now we're going to go finally start doing this. Some schools are doing all the things that I'm sharing right now. And so when I talk about this, I'm thinking about education as a whole. And the reason that I talk about the idea of like people are and feel valued is I'm not just talking about um, teachers in classrooms. And I know that they're just kind of how society is really having this appreciation because people are realizing how hard the work education is because they're seeing all the struggles at home, you know, working with their own children and seeing this, but the, just the celebration of our support staff and all the incredible things that they're doing to help our communities right now. And when I talk about this idea of having people, cause I think people are always valued but I think a lot of times people don't feel valued. And I know personally that I can struggle with that. I can struggle when I feel I am trying to help other people, but the appreciation's not there and it, it can be tough. And just educators are so giving of, of their lives, of you know their hearts and their souls to what we do in education. And the idea that you know they don't, feel valued because we can say we value them all we want but if they don't feel that it doesn't matter right and so that's something that i really hope we continue to do as we go back into our schools go into our classrooms and is really happening right now and i've been just blown away by not only what i've been seeing um from educators from support staff in what they're doing to just really support kids and support communities and families in this really hard time. But also, I've really been appreciative of all the posts really celebrating that, and not just from uh, their own schools, but from parents in the community, um, you know, from news networks, from uh, different spaces, and just highlighting some of those things. So that idea of going back and make sure that we just really hit it hard, the importance of people knowing they are valued is, is really important to me. Uh, the second one is that we have a stronger focus on mental and physical health. And I think a lot of schools have had that, um, especially with students. But that being said, I think sometimes we actually can put our own mental and physical health aside. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, I've taught, I've taught probably about 10 to 15 years, uh, like 10 years, uh, I taught full time. And then I taught a little bit as an assistant principal taught as a principal. And I've been in education 20 years in some roles. And I know that I've done this. And I know that educators listening to do this, they will come to school sick, partially sick, because of all of the work that we have to do to prepare for not being there. It's like, an, it's like adding an extra day sometimes when you have to prepare sub plans and, and things like that. And so sometimes what I used to do, and I know some of my colleagues used to do, we say, okay, you know what, I got to go in because this is just going to be too much of a pain to be there. And so really, how do we actually put things in place where we focus on, on, on the idea of our physical and mental health and being safe. And obviously right now, you know, people are saying like, don't go places if you're feeling any form of sick, but will that be something that we, that happens a year from now when we go back to education. And for me, you know, when I was a principal, I, I, I remember distinctly having a conversation with a staff member who was struggling and, I could see it and they were coming to school every day. And I just asked them, I said, why are you here? And they said, well, you know, I, like I'm not physically sick. I'm, I'm struggling mentally, obviously, but I'm not physically sick. I'm like, it's the same thing. And sometimes we just need that day away. Like we just need that day away. And I remember having the conversation and distinctly saying, I would rather you be here four days at 100% than five days at 50. And if you do the math, you know, um, you'll, you'll, you'll be better off that way. And so sometimes we struggle and I know, uh, and maybe this is something I shouldn't be saying some days when I would take sick days, there was not one physical issue with me, nothing. I just couldn't go that day and just something was holding me back. 
And I know that we, we can actually kind of forego those things. And so I hope that we had this emphasis on how important our physical and mental health is. And just thinking about all of the struggles that, you know, many of our kids are going through at this time, how traumatic this experience could be, not only for the kids, but for adults as well. And so I hope we have that really renewed focus on uh, mental and physical health when we go back, because I think it's necessary uh, for the work we do. We cannot serve others when we are really running on empty all the time. And I know, and I appreciate that educators do that, but we also create a system that pushes them to, to go there and run on empty sometimes. And I think we have to make sure that we communicate how important it is not only to the people we serve, but to ourselves that sometimes you just need to take that day to, you know, take some time and just, you know, refresh and, and, and come back, um, you know, better off. So the third one I'm going to talk about is the use of technology in a way that really enhances face-to-face -face relationships, not replacing them. I, I actually used to be, I know this sounds weird because of all the stuff I do online, I used to be very anti-technology. And the reason I was anti-technology is what I had often um, witnessed in education was kids going into a computer lab, getting on a program and just kind of zoning out. And there was like little interaction with um, teachers, little interaction with one another, but there is some like cool new app or cool new, new tool. And I was kind of against it. And when I really started seeing the power of utilizing technology to actually connect with people and learn from one another and build relationships, I think it actually changed my mind on, you know, the power of what technology could be. And so what you're seeing right now is educators all over the world utilizing technology because it's one of the only ways we can actually connect, um, you know, and I'm not going to say face to face, but connect, you know, in a more personal way with our students, with our communities. And I hope that we continue to utilize it that way. And it's been great to see, you know, uh, videos, uh, people connecting together, sharing with one another. And one of the things I, I think is really interesting is that I have known um, educators to actually say, you know, um, you know, like kids shouldn't be using technology in school and how it's not necessary, but they're also sharing that on a huge platform on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. And they have the access to connect with a community and build a community, but also saying, well, kids shouldn't actually be able to do that in school but we benefit from that. So why wouldn't we teach our kids how to actually do that in a safe and meaningful way? So when we go back, I'm hoping that we, we see the ways that technology is being used right now to really build relationships and, 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 and continue that. Because I think what my parents have taught me and my parents are both immigrants to Greece. I talk about them all the time. Um, I, I love, seeing my mom on FaceTime. I loved when my dad, when he was alive, connected with me on FaceTime. I think the most amazing thing about my mom, and I know if you're listening to the podcast, you can't see this, but if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you probably see, she knows how to use everything on her iPhone and FaceTimes me, sends me text messages, but she, for some reason, can't get this down. She cannot get that when she calls that I only see the top of her forehead, uh, which is really fascinating to me. She knows all the other things, but she just doesn't know how to get that camera angle. And I just think I kind of love it. It's actually the most adorable thing. So I think just really thinking about how we use technology in a meaningful way uh, to build relationships is something that we need to continue on uh, in the work that we do. Because if I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of technology but I'm a way bigger advocate of people and I think that when we focus on tapping into technology to bring out the best in one another that is the best way to use it the next one is how we spend our time and thinking about this and right now you know getting to spend a lot of time with my daughter a lot of quality time that I actually will be honest with you I haven't had before uh, to this extent and it's been amazing and I've seen educators, uh, you know, and partly is because, you know, standardized tests are not there. There's that pressure that's alleviated and thank goodness, but no one really 
no one's upset. Like parents are like, well, how do I know how my kids do in Saturday test? Well, maybe I shouldn't say nobody. I'm sure there's somebody out there, but what I, I have seen right now and is a focus. And I was, I was talking about earlier is spending our time on things that matter. The, the things that I've been, that really help me to do the work that I'm doing today in education are not only the skills that I learned in, um, in, in, you know, writing class and, you know, in science and math and things like that. But really when I look back at my school experience, it was the, it was the, you know, the arts that inspired me. It was uh, sports that taught me the importance of leadership and collaboration. And, you know, for years and years and years, you see more and more schools cutting programs, cutting down extracurricular um, options courses to focus on more academic courses because of the pressures of that we're kind of creating. And I think that how we spend our time, I'm seeing a lot more people focus on their artistic side right now, focus on, you know, um, you know, physical health, things like that. And I, I hope that in school, we realize that actually is some of the most valuable time of what we can be doing in education. And I know that many people listening to this that were, you know, kind of my generation, I bet you they could tell you the same story. Yeah. Hey, I benefited from academics, obviously, but I had a huge benefit from the extra curricular activities and our kids will too. And so I hope that we really think about, you know, what does a, um, a child's day look like through, you know, the lens through their lens and we experience that and how are we spending our time to bring out that creative and artistic side that collaborative side the leadership side and, and all those different things and so I think people really right now are very cognizant of how they're spending t their time because you know things are weird right now we want to be better with our time and be more thoughtful of who we spend our time with and who we interact with because we know that who we surround ourselves and what we what we do during that time really shapes a lot of who we are. And so the last one to we'll talk about is that we continue to focus and we have a re-emphasized focus on helping every learner find success in a way that is meaningful to them. And the the language I'm using there is I'm very thoughtful of because when we talk about every student finding success in schools, it's often about them finding success in a way that we think is right. And that could be in, you know, certain classrooms, things like this. But I think success is a very personal thing to define. You listening right now, how you define success and how I define success can be two different things. And we can have achieve totally different things and both be successful. Or in fact, I could be doing something that you think I'm successful at and I, and it could be the exact opposite. And so really we have to help our kids find what success looks like and what it means to be and ensuring that every kid has that opportunity in our schools and that it looks different. And how do we ensure that kids have the opportunities to excel in things? How do we tap into their strengths? How do we tap into their passions and bring that out? And I love that there's been this renewed focus and I've, I've watched educators, you know, still teaching the curriculum because that's part of, you know, what they have to do with standards objectives. But really, um, as I talk about Innovate Inside the Box, really shifting the learning to bring out the talents and skills so that, you know, kids are doing more than school. And I say this all the time that the curriculum is a minimum of what we have to teach, but we can go beyond and really looking at each learner. And the, rate, the reason I use the term learner, not student, is because I'm not just talking about the kids, I'm talking about the adults and really trying to figure out how do we tap in to each learner and, and bring out the best in them in, in what they do and, and helping them identify what success means to them but helping them on that pathway. And I've just been so blown away by all the stories that educators have been sharing that. So I just wanted to share those, those five things and I'll go over them a quick. The people are, are and feel valued, um, that we have a stronger focus on mental and physical health, that when we use technology is to build relationships, not to replace them, 
we have a stronger focus on how we spend our time and who we spend our time with, and that we continue to focus on helping every learner find success in ways that are meaningful to them. And as, a, as you listen to this, I want you just to think like, what is maybe one thing that you hope we continue to do um, that we've learned through this process that we have control over? Because when I was talking about the first article about the health and safety concerns, those are things that kind of are gonna be done to us, but there's also things that we can do. And so what is that one thing that you want to actually continue um, that you're doing right now that will make you better? And I actually read a tweet the other day and partly was the inspiration uh, for, for writing this blog post. And it was really, really powerful. Uh, Daniel Hodge uh, tweeted this. Today, my students listed about 20 things that they actually like about remote learning. And we quickly turned the list into changes I, I need to make to my classroom next year. Daniel epitomizes the notion of growing through it and taking this, this time and seeing the opportunities as we move forward because we have a lot of control on what happens when we move back. And I know we don't have control over everything, but the things we do, we can make better. I, I appreciate you taking the time to listen. I hope you're safe. I hope you're well. Thank you for all you do. Take care.